This is Alan here at NEB with Jason Druss at the Black Magic booth, and Black Magic has a brand new 4K Micro Four Thirds camera. The difference between it, the old pocket camera and the new pocket camera, is it has a Micro Four Thirds sensor. So that is a big deal. So tell me more about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Alan. Um, so this is the uh, Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Um, we're really, really excited about this camera. As you said, it features a micro four-thirds lens mount and a micro four-thirds sensor. Uh, that sensor is going to have 13 stops of dynamic range, and it's our first camera to feature uh, native dual ISO. So the uh, ISOs are going to be uh, 400 and 3200, um, with a max ISO of 25,600. So it's brand new color science technology for Blackmagic design cameras, and this is the first camera that we've implemented this dual ISO technology in. Um, additionally, this camera has a lot of features that you'd even find on the, um, the Ursa Mini line of cameras, like the Ursa Mini Pro with the 4.6K. Um, it features Bluetooth connectivity, so you can connect this with our iPad app for uh, wireless control over the camera. Additionally, this camera, similar to the Ursa Mini line of cameras, runs on the Blackmagic operating system, our OS, for our cameras. So if I hit the menu, the folks at home are going to find uh, very familiar menus to uh, what they're used to seeing on the Ursa Mini camera. Um, this camera is going to record uh, ProRes uh, in a Proxy Light 422NHQ, as well as Cinema DNG RAW, 1 to 1, 3 to 1, and 4 to 1. And uh, those resolutions that it's going to record all of those codecs in are HD, Ultra HD, and DCI 4K 4096 by 2160, which is really exciting. Um, the camera records to CFAS 2, a CFAS 2.0 card or an SD card slot. Now, can you do 4K on the SD card slot? Yes, you can. Um, I believe that... Well, you the, probably uh, can't do the RAW format. I believe for the RAW format in 4K, you're going to want to use a CFS 2.0 card for that. Um, additionally, we take a Canon LPE6 battery, similar to the, uh, the micro cinema camera that we have beforehand. And uh, what else? Oh, uh, let's talk about LUTs. This camera gives you the ability to upload lookup tables directly into the camera, and you can use them as a preview while you're recording log, or you can bake any LUT you load in straight into the camera. So if you have a cinematic emulation LUT that you have at home, or if you've made your own LUT in DaVinci Resolve, you want to load that into the camera, you can bake that right into your image for faster workflows. Now, the LUTs are, or the log is included in the price of the camera. That's right. Well, what you're going to get uh, for the camera when you, when you first buy it, what you're first going to see is a um, you know 4K film to video, which is like a log to Rec. 709 standard. And then you're going to get 4K film to extended video, which is a lookup table that you're going to find also in our Ursa broadcast camera, which is essentially not as punchy as a straight Rec. 709. You're going to get a lot more latitude and a lot less contrast in it, which is really nice. We also have a 4K Rec. 2020 hybrid log gamma. Oh, okay. If you plan to work in a Rec 2020 color space, or if you plan on eventually outputting HDR, it's a great preview LUT, so it'll help you anticipate your needs for how you want to light your scene or, or position your camera for, uh, for an, a final HDR output. So it's a very HDR-friendly camera, and with 13 stops of dynamic range and dimension resolve, you can very easily create HDR media. Absolutely. I mean, having log and, and uh, HDR, it's just... Uh really go-to points these days for uh, most cameras. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very important. And uh, some other features that are, that are great to know for your users, um, we've got four microphones on the front of the camera right here. Um, so it's, it's probably you know one, one of the better microphone systems you've seen built into the camera. But when you want to use external audio, we also have these eighth inch audio inputs right. as well as an analog XLR input right here. We have a two pin Limo locked and power connector and then we have a USB-C port right here. Not only can you power the camera over USB-C but if you have like a portable hard drive uh, Yeah, you know, I, I heard you can record directly to the hard drive. Yeah, you can plug a portable hard drive right into here via USB-C and just record straight to your hard drive, bypass your cards, bypass your file transfer and just plug your hard drive right into DaVinci Resolve or whatever you're using and start post-production right away. That's pretty amazing on itself being able to record directly like to an SSD, a, a hard drive, uh, external hard drive. Yeah, or even even a, a regular non-SSD hard drive. It's, um, you know, USB-C is just going to be fast enough to carry along that data to most of the new newer portable USB-C hard drives. Now let's talk about the Micro Four Thirds aspect of this. This is yeah. a full frame Micro Four Thirds sensor. What is the megapixel of the sensor? 
Um, you know, I'm not sure off the top of my head what the megapixel count of the sensor is. I can say that what we're going to be doing is, is sampling um, full 4K DCI, 4096 by 2160. Um, and then when you take a still, because our camera does have a little stills option there, it'll take whatever resolution you're currently in. So if you're in HD or Ultra HD or DCI 4K, gotcha. it'll record a still from that. Yeah, because at 4K, you know, that's equivalent of an 8 to 10 megapixel image. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure that's what the what the math lines up to. Um, I'm, again, I'm, we can follow up and find out what the exact megapixel yeah. counts so you can let your viewers know. For right now, um, you know, it's important to know that the camera records HD, Ultra HD, and full 4K. Also, I noticed it has an active micro four thirds mount, so that means that I assume autofocus and image stabilization will work. Yeah, absolutely. The opti any optical image stabilization that works that is uh, coming through a micro four thirds lens is, uh, is going to is going to work with the camera. In addition, um, you know, for instance, we have uh, aperture control or iris control on the five inch touchscreen feature on the back of the camera, so I can just hit iris right here, and you can actually even I'll oh. hold the lens up. You can actually hear the iris. Yeah. Yes, you can. Opening and closing yeah, I, by controlling the touchscreen. So, yeah, it is an active Micro Four Thirds lens mount. So that's awesome as well because there's a lot of Micro Four Thirds lenses out there. There's, I have a bunch of them myself, and they're absolutely wonderful. And i also really glad that you guys put a control wheel on the front. We did put a controller wheel on the front. It, it, it operates a lot more like a traditional camera you might be used to using um, of this size. And I can hit ISO or shutter or white balance and I can adjust through this little wheel we have in the front of the hand grip right here. Um, also, this is gonna be even lighter, the final production model, because this is a, a prototype. The final model is gonna come in at about 1.2 pounds with a, a, a lighter uh, carbon fiber alloy that we're gonna be using. And uh, yeah, and the hand grip is incredibly comfortable. You're gonna have no problem holding this camera and working with it all day. Now, how soon is this camera going to be available? This camera is going to be available, we're hoping, in September. So I think around September you're going to see the camera to start to ship. And it has a very, very attractive price point at uh, tw uh, $1,295. Yeah. So $1,295. And the camera is going to come with a full version of DaVinci Resolve Studio. So it's going to come with a paid version of Resolve in the box. So just getting that alone is a nice little addition, let alone in a, sense, a discount. Absolutely, that's right. And of course, I see there's a quarter 20 thread on the top as well as the bottom, which is great to have for mounting accessories. Absolutely, absolutely. The third party market has always been very kind to um, make all kinds of products that work with our cameras, and I'm sure this will be uh, no exception to that. And I also notice you even have strap lugs. So if you want to carry it with a camera strap, you can. Yeah, absolutely. And the straps are right on the top here. Yeah, right on the top. Yeah. And this screen is five inches, isn't it, diagonal? Five inch touch screen. It's actually the same screen that you'll find in the Blackmagic Video Assist. So it's a 1920 by 1080 full HD five inch touch screen. That is incredible resolution, you know, for any type of small camera like this to have that much. But it is fixed, I noticed. Oh, uh, it is fixed, yeah. So you won't be able to move the screen. But because it's five inches, you're going to be able to view it in a lot of certain um, angling scenarios. I'm, I'm noticing that as I'm turning it to different sides, I can see it quite well. And of course, yeah. it's on a slight angle too, so that helps when it's on a tripod. Yeah, I love that the back of the camera has this little angle to it. So you're, you're always looking at it at a bit of an angle so you don't have to be extremely dead on. But I'm sure the, the heavy pro cinema users are going to, you know, rig this to high heaven um, as, as you do with most cameras. And I noticed you have four three function buttons as well three custom function buttons so you can map you know false color or frame guides or focus peaking or zebra or anything you want under there yeah a very very impressive camera even have a dedicated hd hfr button yeah that's a high frame rate button we actually you'll see that on the ursa mini pro and the ursa mini 4.6k essentially if you want to switch to like let's say 24p to 60p because by the way the camera does full 60p and 4k and 120 frames per second in hd but there's a lot of other settings you want to switch with that. You might, you're going to you know, change your shutter speed. That might affect what you want your ISO to be. So you want your ISO to follow through with that. So there's four or five settings you're going to want to change. So we wanted to have a one button mode where you can set in the camera what you want that mode to be. You hit high frame rate. Everything changes to where it needs to be to adequately shoot that new high frame rate that you want to go with. And that is, I mean, it, it just, uh, it feels good in the hand. So I think you've done a good job with the design of this. This is Alan here at Blackmagic at NEB and subscribe to Personal Views YouTube channel and we will see you later.